So, you want to have a Minecraft server, but you have one issue. You don't know jack about how to actually go about making one. So you go online and find people saying very different things. And since so many people commented on my video last time where I tested five of the biggest server hosts out there, I thought, hey, why not try just every method people tell me to? So today we're going to be self-hosting Minecraft servers with some of the options people have told me to do. Using an old computer, using a VPS, and of course, the much-loved Oracle free server and comparing them to an actual host and other options. So let's buckle up, we're getting in. This is my very first computer. My family bought in 2010 and this is where I first played Minecraft on and after a few years it broke and I spent a considerable amount of time learning about computers to fix it again. I swapped its original i3 for a very mighty 4 core and 8 threads Intel Core i7-860, one of the first of its kind. Turboing through 3.46 GHz, it's a surprisingly robust little CPU. Coupled with the fastest RAM available at the time, being DDR3, this is almost as old as some of the people watching this video. And it will set the benchmark to where all others in this video will be compared to, as if you can't beat a 10 buck CPU, it ain't worth it. As always, testing data will be added to the spreadsheet, you can find it in the description below. So, this PC runs Windows, shock horror, as that's likely what newcomers will use, something they know. And don't worry little Jimmy, the Linux guy, we're going to the realm of Linux soon enough, but for now, let's start out with like, what would be someone's first experience. Going through the process of installing a fabric server is quick and painless and it's pretty well described on the website as well. The only thing I changed is the amount of RAM my server will use. If you look closely you will see that the line of text says dash xmx 2 gigs. This is what is known as a startup flag and this tells my server to grab a maximum of two gigabytes of RAM. We're going to change that to four gigabytes for this experiment so my server can use a maximum of four gigs. In theory this server has 16 gigabytes in its system so i could also do that but i wouldn't be able to compare to all the other server hosts which are also using four gigs now this cpu is 16 years old so i want you to guess how many chunks per second it will generate in the render test considering that the lowest value we've had so far was eternals with 10.09 generated per second so what's your guess five maybe seven Surely it's not going to perform some of the others already tested and the others in this video, right? Well, I'll leave that to the end. But first, let us roll up our sleeves and get ourselves the real deal. A Linux server. A VPS or virtual private server is essentially one of those big servers cut into little pieces for people to rent out to. It's like making a villa into an apartment. Everyone has their own space, but there's only one power line. You have, again, a bunch of options here, but I specifically always go with Hetzner or OVH. For example, I'm choosing Hetzner. Specifically, their two core 4 gigabyte RAM option I showed off in my previous video, as this is only four bucks a month, and still has four gigabytes. I will also be showing off their slightly more expensive two vCore eight gigabytes RAM version. Then this little Timmy's is where some Linux knowledge is needed. I know it's scary at first, trust me. I'm not an expert either, but it's not as hard as it seems and you're gonna look really cool doing it. You're gonna feel like a hacker if that's something you want to feel like. And should it be a little bit too intimidating for you, you can always just install a nice looking GUI with some Googling because all you need to do is get Java installed making sure it's java 21 running this command and then download the fabric server get the mods onto it as well and just just get onto it if you're having troubles with getting files on a server you can also use stuff like winscp now in order to start your server we will use the same command as before however the downside on doing this directly in a terminal software like putty is that when i shut this software down the server will also shut down so ideally you would like to install something like crafty or pterodactyl but once done i set the render on and i moved up to the third option oracle okay the much discussed and the much left oracle free tier servers giving you 24 gigabytes of ram with four arm core processors and all of the low low price of nothing well technically it asked me for a buck but I'll get back to that. Though this one also will require some Linux knowledge, but like I said, don't be afraid of the big black box with white text. Linux isn't as hard as people make it out to be. I learned the basics in like an afternoon, and now I'm actually running Arch as my main OS. Speaking of which, it took me a number of tries getting into the Oracle VM I just created. I'm not exactly a genius when it comes to SSH keys yet, but 
For those who don't know, SSH keys are basically files that act as your password with a public and a private key. You load your personal key into your application, in this case Putty, to tell the server, hey, it's me, let me in. But for some reason, Putty kept fucking up and saying I didn't have a public key, which is just wrong by the way but whatever i got it generated downloaded so now we can repeat all the steps we just did on headster which brings me to my entire point of this video the benchmarks now before we start comparing i usually don't do this but these videos are very costly to make i like 10 times more than all the series has made me thus far so if you like me testing all these servers out and testing all the options at least consider subscribing maybe consider giving me a buck on patreon for full access with interviews but enough e-bagging you want to see results and i do too so let's go all the testing data i base this conclusion on and how you can perform these same tests yourself will be available in the description below as i said so be sure to check that out basically i'm using the same seed every time on the same version of fabric with the same version of the mod and then just rendering a thousand chunks and see how they compare let's start out with the worst option i've had so far point the hetzner shared four gigabyte server what a goddamn slog it was to see this go through it scored a measly 7.69 average chunks nice rendering in the entire radius in 37 minutes and 32 seconds this is abysmal eternos the free ad infested inferno was even faster than this so if you're on a budget by all means Go and do anything else but this. The main issue here is that the CPUs are not meant for gaming based workloads, especially not when they're shared with like 10 other people. And also, only having access to two V cores isn't helping. This means the server is constantly going to be handicapped because some guy named Hans from Frankfurt wanted to try hosting a Discord bot on the same node as your server. But what about the dedicated CPU option? Well, firstly, it's a lot more expensive. I'm talking the price range of Apex and Shockbite expensive. You should get a lot of performance then, right? Well, while the performance is going up to 19.1 instead of 7.69 and finishing in only 14 minutes and 7 seconds, you do also pay almost four times as much for the privilege of your server maybe being twice as fast. Considering that you get a modern server for not only 12 bucks, but that server will get triple the performance i wouldn't really recommend ditching hosting providers for this one alone but that doesn't mean that it's all bad there might be vps's out there that are really good but what if you can't find one well there is always the alternative oracle scored 20.06 chunks per second and with a render time of only 13 minutes and 16 seconds so it is within margin of error of hetzner but why is this better you ask well basically because the server was free literally there's no caveat you just sign up Get this instance, set up within minutes by the way, no ads, no wait time, no bullcrap, just server go up and server go burr. That's all you need to get it going, if you can get it working. See, like I said, I am familiar with SSH and private keys, but I can't figure out for the life of me how this Oracle shit is supposed to work. I can't connect, so I couldn't get it installed. But Lunar I, you ask, how did you get these numbers? Well, I used someone else's pterodactyl panel on Oracle, shout out to Ian, and just did my tests on that. It's exactly the same instance, so there can't be that much of a difference. And let's just say, if I can't figure this out in like two hours time, little Timmy won't do this either. There's a reason why one of the most Google terms next to self-hosting is to do it without port forwarding, because mom doesn't even know what the router is or that it even has a password. She won't give it to you. So performance wise, it's okay, but setting it up is even more difficult than it has any right to be, especially since you have to have a credit card. I didn't have a credit card until very, very recently because credit cards are just financial shovels. But let's get the simplest and potentially the best option I tested out of the way, my old PC. My old reliable, I really doubted her, you know, like I started out this benchmark and I expected it to run very terribly. But what about you? You might expect that this would be the worst tested server thus far, considering this is 16 years old. But you're wrong. Coming in with a whopping 24.68 chunks per second generated. That is twice as fast as our previous free option, Eternal. And about as fast as Apex hosting. It's not really surprising to me. Because this CPU still has 8 cores and it can fully dedicate it to terrain generation. Because yes, Minecraft is single threaded. But most mods are not. 
they utilize the other cores more as you can't just stop the game for you to render a chunk, right? You can see it on the screen right now, it's happening. And from all the testing I've done today, I can tell you right now, this is it. And I just had this PC laying around. If you just have one yourself laying around with four cores, that's it. You only need four cores, you're already golden. That said, there's also a con to this. This is my power meter and I ran an hour or four of my server on maximum load to calculate how much the average amount of wattage is being used. Running this PC 24-7 would cost me in electricity bills around 23 bucks a month. It, for my American viewers, that can be as low as 12 USD to as high as like 30. So that really depends on your living conditions if you want to foot that bill. Because if you live at home or you have solar panels, you're fine. But if you're living on your own and you're already not scraping by, I wouldn't recommend adding another 30 bucks to your bills. But what's my point here? Is self-hosting actually better or not? Well, the answer is it depends. You know, it depends on what kind of person you are. Are you willing to learn and willing to do some work in a full afternoon to get their server up and running with the benefit that you have the entire control over your hardware, but with the risk that you need to share your IP around? Or do you just want to buy a good VPS for a good enough experience or want to fiddle around with Oracle? Just try it. Try self-hosting. Like, there's nothing wrong with trying to set it up. You will learn how Minecraft server works and that's a valuable skill to have, not because it's Minecraft, but because it's just a general Java process. It's a general skill to have. But if you don't have the time to do this, if you don't have the time to learn or just fiddle an entire afternoon with setting up a server, just get just like a moderate server for 12 bucks or a GG server with code pebble for only 25%. Okay, I'll stop now. But even if you don't want to spend money, you could just use world host or essential or E4MC. These, these work fine with the caveat that you need to be online. But what's the fun in playing with friends if you're not even going to be online, right? The bottom line is no matter what you choose to use, you should never be ashamed of it. Because one fucking guy keeps shouting at you that self-hosting is better doesn't mean that you should be ashamed that you're using host. Do it. Do your own stuff. But for now, I was Lunar. You were very awesome. And I'll see you in the next one. Uh, this recording is looking at 20 minutes. Uh, yeah, I, I want to say thank you to all my pebbles. I want to say thank you for everyone who supported me throughout the testing uh thank you to everyone who came to the live stream not too long ago it was really fun i really really enjoyed uh having you around uh <clears throat> i want to thank ian again for lending me their uh their expertise i want to thank uh ellie checksum from pyro for have making me a little script so i can easily uh parse the data files to have a cps list and then average that and i want to of course thank you the viewer for watching this long this is probably gonna be a longer video than usual i know attention spans are rough these days but i really appreciate that you watch me immensely thank you very much and i'll see you next time bye bye